Anyone have questions for our panel? Yes. So, Craig, you mentioned uh, you have uh, six uh, drone operators. I believe you said uh, three up here and three down. Yeah. Did they all go through, of course, the uh, FAA? Um, uh, could you describe that a little bit to us? Uh, how that was, uh, how difficult that was, how easy it was, but, uh, what you see in the future, maybe, for it? Yeah. So, I mean, to piggyback on what Ryan said, so all six went through the um, they're licensed, um, and I'm not a licensed drone pilot, but I believe it's the FAA, I think section 117, so they went through, but again, it's just, it's like the drivers, you know, the written part of the driver's test, that, so they pass that. One of the pilots is actually one of my employees in, in, in uh, environmental compliance, and he's really, really good, and then, you know, we had a, a vendor came in and, and trained him on, on how to use it. Again, it's, it's an America-made uh, uh, drone. I want to stop you right there. A vendor came in and trained him. I wonder what that vendor had. Why? <laughs> that's one of my no, I agree. biggest I complaints agree. Yeah. is that's happening. Yeah. The vendors are taking over this right. industry. And right. so don't learn from a vendor, right. please. Right. But, but you know that and I know and that's what's out there, yes. Continuing to learn and, and you know, just yeah. start on it and using it for the environment. Are you guys what? like fixed wings or rotary? rotary? They're the rotary. So, so let's yeah. put that yeah. question back on the moderator. So, okay. Because it's such yeah. a it's, it's such right. a new thing for us, right? We didn't know. I don't think we right. really knew where to go to that's get right. So it was was there a better place to go? No, that's the problem. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Right. See why Randy's yeah. shaking his head? No. Yeah. After being out there for seven years, that's why I stand here tonight, right. and that's right. why I'm like this gap is so important. And we could do the model. Trust me, if we can come together just like this, and everybody comes together, this is what I see, and share. Let this be open source. We're learning from one another. Because you're all going to use the drones, and many times drones cross over from engineering to construction to surveying. So if we can get a foundation, and we're learning what you're doing, we're learning from them. This is what our students, and when they come out of here with this certification after a year of intense training, after six weeks, if we don't think that they're putting in, they're out. They will all know they have six weeks. And so you will know. And the other thing is you're going to be a part of this all the way through. So. A year, we'll be ready for your next batch. For your next, we'll be It'll ready. It'll probably be longer. Than yes. that, but, I mean, but that's that's one of the things. Right. And, and when you said that, that's what makes me just cringe. I'm like, um, no, yeah. you know. And it makes Randy cringe. I mean, anybody that's in this field knows when I said 190 partnerships, 77 of them didn't have any drone experience. That should scare you all. Well, and I mean, taking on with Ryan said, I mean, where do you go? That's right. right. And, and we will always do the right thing. So that's right. It's a better way to do oh, it. Yeah, we'll yeah, do yeah. that. Yeah. I know, and you're here. So we appreciate yeah. it, too. Uh -huh. We do. We very much appreciate it. Yeah. So, another question. Yes. So, Ryan, this, uh, this is building up on your question that you talked about where do people go to a point. What is currently and when we run responsibilities, so whoever can build on that, that, what is current understanding of available talent and care of talent that currently exists and as we move forward with this technology, where the technology is going to be much simpler to build and, and, and is provide by people who can use the technology in most effective and safe manner. Uh, where are they going to come from, and what's the gap currently? Uh, that uh, uh, do we have a good understanding of uh, how many people we might need now, or within the next ten years? I want to try to answer your question. Um, I, I I think uh, you know I, I kind of equate it back to a little bit around cybersecurity. If you go back. 10 years ago around cybersecurity, everybody 
knew that cybersecurity was out there and they knew it was important, but they didn't really know what it was or how to define it or how to train people or how to educate people or how to you know, predict what the workforce demands were going to be. Um, and then over the last couple of years, we've seen the highest demand in cybersecurity professional uh, that we've ever seen in the world of technology. And for every 10 jobs, you know, there are seven vacancies in cybersecurity. So it's, it's made progress, but there's still a gap there. I think the drone, I think that the, the, this whole world of drone technology is probably in the same, the same situation as cybersecurity was, like I said, 10, 10 years ago. Uh, I think we have to rely and, and push our universities and our education uh, foundations uh, and trade schools and, and, and so on and so forth to uh, you know to build those programs to start to produce that talent for a few years down the road. I mean that's what I think. Great. Well, I'll just tag on to that. I mean we had the same situation with with GIS. Yes, I yeah, mean right. 20 years ago, I mean we had no GIS at, at McLean Gas. That's where we were back then. It was all in paper. And we decided we're going the GIS route. And we hired one employee, and that employee, okay, let's get started, and then another, and then another. And to Ryan's point, we went to the university. SIU Edwards is a big supplier of our GIS folks. Mizzou oh, is a oh, big supplier. I mean, Southwest Missouri State. Um, you know, that's where we get them from. I mean, you know, 20 years ago, GIS was just getting started at the university. So, same thing. Yeah, and I'll, you know. Yeah. Who's connected to SIU either? <laughs> okay. I, I, look, and this is a biased opinion just because my son is there. Uh, but I would say every, you can literally line up our employees and you can almost point a finger at every SIU grad based on their work ethic and, and the contribution to the organization. So I, I don't know what the secret sauce is at SIU, but we need more of it. So. Watch us grow. <laughs> Tell that to the rest of St. Louis. We don't need St. Louis. We have the talent here. You know, we've, we've, been a, we've been a huge pipeline to St. Louis to, to the, the, the ecosystem for a long time. I mean, we're one of the NGA's primary, our primary, uh, we're a pipeline directly into those guys. I mean, and it goes back, you know, 30 years. Uh, so I know that, I, uh, I know uh, my, one of my, one of my top employees' wife works for you guys, and she's way up in the ladder. Uh, she worked for me. Uh, I don't know, maybe her name is Preeta. Preeta? Yeah. You know Preeta? Yeah. So her husband's my prime GIS guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, yeah, we, we uh, I think you're right. I think it's one thing to, to we've, got to, we've got to do a better job at the university level of thinking this on through. Uh, we, have a, we, have a drum, we have a drum class at the university. I'm not involved in them, but they're being taught. And they're, they're it's, 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 boy, it's a toy. And, and, they, and they take the test at the very end, but they're not really exposed to, to the critical aspect of what could happen out there. And that's what I think has got to take place. And I'm not, I don't want to be that's chicken. It. I don't want to be chicken a little here. No. And I'm just saying that, that this, is growing, this is growing exponentially. So if you have a few problems now, they're going to be exponential five years from now. So how do, we, how, do we, how do we get on top of it? How do we mitigate that? How do we think this thing through so that we don't create we just connect. a monster? We connect and share. That's how. Now, I, I just, I can't say that enough, that when we look at this talent, just tonight, you know, finding out, I, I wonder if you're going to connect with the person in his office and you know, you know, that's what this is about. How many people here? Yes, go ahead. So, let's take that to the next step, as far as workforce training. I and mean, if you bring somebody in through the school, to me, there's a big opportunity to build apprenticeship programs with this. I mean, you tie that into either a competency-based apprenticeship program where the individual goes through and is competent on these things or turns into a time-based apprenticeship program where they work 1,000 hours or 2,000 hours. And then they achieve, besides the certificate from the school, they also achieve their designation as the Department of Labor Certified Apprentice. So, Southwestern Illinois, again, is leading the state in apprenticeship programs. Our nine-county region has more apprenticeship programs probably than the rest of the state combined. So I think that's a possibility as well. I mean, we're not, if we're looking at students with high school diplomas, GEDs coming into the program, I think that's another opportunity to get them the on-the-job training that's going to be so important. Randy's talking about running into those situations. I mean, have them 
but someone mentoring them who's already in that field, it's going to be valuable what they learn, what they test, and then the actual on-the-job training to get them to the point where you need to get them to. That is one of the things in our class, our partners, the students go out on the job sites for three months. So when they sign up with us, that's one of the things that they have to work with these students, and the students are in teams of five. Well, we can so, take that to the next step. Actually, yes. in an apprenticeship program, you can do classroom, on the job classroom, you that's can right. do it all up front. So the benefit to the student then is it becomes a earn as you learn. So instead of being out there for three months, sort of not getting paid, and then they're working with the employer, the employers are paying them, or else we have an agreement where we get grant money and we can combine with the employers to meet some of those expenses. I'll tell you, from, I think from, from Spire's perspective, I mean, our, our, we'll come in right here and now, but we have an internship program, a really good internship program at Spire, and there is no doubt in my mind that we could create an apprenticeship program. Uh, Great. We, we will. So the workforce agencies in the St. Louis region are sort of different from what I found anywhere in the country. In fact, we had a farmer, our secretary of the Department of Labor come to town and say they hadn't seen bi-state work so well together. So the St. Louis entities that do the same thing as I do over in the yep. farthest part of this area can be on board for the same program. In fact, we just submitted a grant to the Department of Labor for $6 million for that combined area apprenticeship program in medical and bioscience. So. I think once we get established and they're successful, I think those opportunities are going to be there. Yep. We're, we're in. Another question. Colonel Robinson, come on. <laughs> what do you think? Well, no, I, clearly drills are an important part of our defense portfolio, right? But, you know, there's a major difference between a quadcopter right, and, and a reaper. So we've got the, the high-end technology part down. Uh, the Department of Defense is lagging behind on small UASs. That's our, our term for the, the quad or eight or brewing type aircraft. Um, I'm with you on the safety thing. Um, they are uh, largely unregulated. Uh, we do have near misses with aircraft. Safety is a problem. Um, I will say our facilities have some of the best defensive systems for drones in the world. Right, so we have an advantage, but our pilots fly all over the place and land at civilian airports, and so they're encountering these things. Um, now there's also uh, weaponization of, of drone technology, right? So that's a, a real threat that that we are concerned with, right? But the, the, the pluses far out my, away the minuses, right? And so uh, we are uh, we have a program that we have set up in the Department of Defense that we're, we're working on. Um, we have a much, uh, we have much deeper pockets than most commercial industry, right? So if we need to stand up a pipeline for, for, uh, for personnel training, we can, we can do that, right? And so uh, we have certain advantages uh, over commercial in industry, but I would say that there's a lot of places that you're moving much faster than us. Uh, if you think the bureaucracy inside of your organizations are uh, as arduous, you should see ours. Um, uh, but the security piece of this is one of the things that, that I am very concerned about. Uh, you know, when you start talking about critical infrastructure inside the United States, uh, the cybersecurity risk is real. Uh, Chinese drones are key, and your data is going to get exported. Right? So, so this is the whole thing about who you bring in and how you bring them in, uh, and what you're flying, and where you're flying, and how you lock it down. Um, Commercial espionage is real as well, so I think for our commercial partners in the room, that's a, another threat that maybe folks aren't thinking through all the way. And just because uh, it's secure from the, maybe the Chinese, it might not be secure from your commercial um, part, uh, your commercial uh, adversaries. Uh, so there's a there's a lot of, of room for growth in here, but I think that the, we've got to work the thought piece out before we work the, the flying piece out. Uh, and I think everybody wants to go to the shiny object. Um, start flying immediately and there's a lot of you know, broken glass that comes along with that approach. And I think it's going to actually cost more in the end to do it that way than make it through the game. That's, that's my two cents. You know, university systems, we have to, we go through not as rigorous as you guys, but export control, everything we do, everything we buy, 
is regulated. I mean, down to it, kind of, you know, nothing old is in life. But I get it. You know, and everything we do, we've got to really watch. I mean, we have to understand that the implications of everything we buy. I'm not sure how well you guys regulate. I don't know if you do it. You probably do it. Oh, yeah. good, good. But, uh, that's a, that's a big, big deal for us. Well, and I think that's when we talk about that, getting FAA's ear for regulation. I mean that, and it's it's what everybody's talking about, but no one's doing anything about it. So we have to start having the discussion before anything can come out of it. Yeah, regulation is one piece, but then you have to get accountability so we're a team. And the second part, of the, the second part, the most important to get through is that your regulation applies to people who are going to follow rules, right? right. So, so if you have people that build their own systems, even if you build uh, no go zones, no fly zones into the computer brain, if they're building their own system, that doesn't apply, right? So how do you, how do we find fixed track uh, these these objects in the air uh, that the FAA can actually do something about or turn over to the law enforcement? Um, once again, I go if you're, you're flying a Southwest jet which has two engines and you think a bird strikes bad, uh, there's suck, suck one of these down here. Your, uh, yeah. turbo fan. It's not going to be a good day. It's going to be important that drones talk to each other going forward. We're going to have to have connection, connectivity. One of the things we looked at a few years ago, putting together a big NSF proposal to, to create a big netted area at SIUE so we actually could begin to fly drones and try to break them, and try to make them, see if they could talk to each other continually. And that's, so to your point, I mean, uh, how do you take over some of these drones when they don't want them to, when they're in the wrong place? I mean, you're right. Certain people can follow the rules, but certain people aren't. And how do you keep that from happening? And there's a lot of issues left to be dealt with. That's why I'm, I have such a hard time with, with uh, to be on the side. You know, that that that, cre that creates a real issue for me. You know, and I just I can't fathom that actually, especially in urban areas or in a in a, in a setting where you're near an airport, so like that. Be on the side is just crazy. Yeah. So we, we're dealing with that problem. You know, and it's, it's funny. Uh, we have places that we don't want people flying over and they try to fly over so we knock their drones down, uh, go over to different methodologies. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, folks that we, we've been working with a lot on this problem set is the prison system. Uh, the prisoners are getting flown contraband in by drones that have been aircraft into the prison. Right? So uh, prisons are now looking at defensive systems for, from, from aerial bombardment. Yeah. Mostly drugs and cell phones and that type of stuff, but you know, uh, you can put lethal means in the prisons as well. Uh, so, the point is, is where there's a will, there's a way. Uh, and somebody will figure out how to crack the code or build their own drones. So we have to have uh, ways to fit in. But on to that, it's not going to stop. No. So, to at least, you know, have a voice that is that common sense and that all of the industries know, you know, there are probably 25 universities now starting to get into this. So I, I think this industry knows that it has to have some stability. That's why we want to work with SIUE, Randy. This is what we see and everybody here because we're, talk we're not talking about teaching kids. We're talking about businesses. That when you look at aerial scene, it's all about critical infrastructures. That's all we're working with. We're not working with anything else. So that is enough. But we have to have regulations. And we need a voice at the table because the FAA doesn't know how to get it out there. I think when you see a pilot and he has, they get something on their license. You know, so this this is something that's going to have to happen. I think together we can start making some decisions. Yes. So uh, I'm retired from the Department of Corrections, where I went to the legislature, and I just want to share with you some of the frustration that's at the legislative level as we're kind of talking through some of this stuff. I ran a bill just a couple of years ago to make it a felony to fly a drone. In over a prison if the purpose was to uh, drop contraband, right? Um, it would not move. 
because the, the feds control all of the drone activities. So the Illinois, Depart uh, the Illinois legislature had a drone task force put together. And um, as you're saying, the FFA doesn't really know what to do about all of it. So even as legislative bodies come up with their own task forces for what they want to do within their state, the FFA isn't necessarily listening to, I'm sorry, the FAA is not uh, necessarily listening to what uh, state legislatures are saying, even when it comes to contraband in prison. Google got involved, actually, in my bill, because I didn't put in the bill that you, uh, the uh, height. So I should have put in a mile or two miles or five miles. Google was concerned that someone could get a felony if they flew a satellite accidentally over a prison facility. So that's how deep some of this stuff goes when we start talking about drones when it comes to the state level and the federal level. So, to me it would be a nightmare if we have state-to-state -state regulations. Right. So that, I think, is probably why you see them just put their heads down. They, don't, they, they haven't come up, they've got a group called ARC, A-R-C, that's supposed to be dealing with beyond visual line of sight. Next thing you know, they made a right turn and they've chosen 20 cities. And the next thing is by 2023, they're going to be flying drone taxis. Yes, we're way behind. And the drone taxis are going to only be 200 versus the 400 feet that drones could fly. So this is, we were all prepared that we were going to be working with the FAA, but they did a right turn and, and uh, we know drone taxis is, so there's a gap, you think, you know. So that's one of the things that we're looking at. But I think if we have Scott Air Force Base, SIUE, Spire, you know, these top companies coming together, you speak like EF Hutton, they'll listen. So that's what we need to do, at least start the conversation together. And, and share, you know, and out of that is going to come some kind of semblance of where to start, you know, we're, we're not, where you start is never where you finish, but you got to start. Any other questions? I think. Oh, we got one more. Oh, go ahead. Um, uh, I work for a local construction contract size outfit, uh, here, so um, can you speak that? Sorry. We do have a drone program. Do you have any recommendations for mid-size, smaller type companies that, in terms of, and we use, I'm just going to throw out any, just like drone deploy for our image processing and stuff like that, but do you have any recommendations on how to get the most out of a program when you've got a smaller budget, you know, we don't have dedicated pilots, well, there's two people that are licensed. Um, just any recommendations for small outfits to get the most out of the program? So I, my personal experience, when we first started, uh, I'm, I'm a former SIU grad too, we actually built some of our drones back in the early 2000s based on hovercraft technology. and. Uh, we bought a bunch of our parts from Radio Shack back then and assembled it together, made it fly. And they've come a long way since, right? I heard Randy mention, it is a toy. I speak from a millennia perspective, it is exactly that, commercial or recreational, but it's easy to build some of these things, it's easy to build an app to track some of them. And so from your perspective, there's several commercial board copters, um, which are less than about $1,000. But again, like, like uh, the gentleman from Scott mentioned, uh, you want to make sure that the data is yours. So uh, you might be able to speak better to as far as data governance and those matters. So, you know, yeah, it'd have to be more of a 1v1 conversation on stuff like this, because it, it depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, everything depends. You know, it's kind of hard to give a blanket advice on almost anything until I try to find out what your application is, what you're trying to do. Uh, it, it, so, there, there, it's like a one size fits none sometimes. Uh, and, and that's my problem with the answer question. I mean, I, it's, I, I love to talk to you about it, but I, I don't have an answer. We, we use all sorts of different software. It depends on what we're trying to do. It just depends. It depends on what your goal and objectives are on your particular facility. Thank you. Thank you.
And that's one of the things that we talk about. Do you know everything else that's out there? You know, um, I can speak from experience working on studies with MODA. You know, we came out, oh, we were so excited. They put us on a different bridge. All of a sudden, the drone hit into the bridge and flew straight up in the air. And it knocked the GPS out because of all the steel. Well, guess what? We had two of the same kind of drones. Well, we wouldn't do that again. So then we went back out. Oh, we're going to go across and we're going to, um, you know, inspect the bridge. You better have a boat halfway out there because you can't see the bridge anymore. So it's all of these failures that have happened that you learn from. But there's bound to be, you know, for me, I would talk to another construction company. I would be, you know, seeing what people are out there. Get on the internet, call them up. People love to tell you what they're doing, you know. So you could open the dialogue up. And what is it that you want? What story are you on? Are you doing it for safety? Are you doing it for, you know, to, to create, take a process, this is a cheaper way to do it, you're gonna save money and time, sorry, I don't like that word cheap, but. So, is that what you're looking for? I mean, you have to know what you want first. Because once you know clearly what you're going to use the drone for, then someone can take it into the next step and, and help you. I mean, I'd be willing, Randy, I know there's people that would talk to you, but, well, probably not him. He's very busy. <laughs> you know, it's funny, I sit here and listen to this, and you, know, you, you come in here thinking you know something, and I'm actually leaving here with two emotions. One emotion is, is I'm really impressed with what you've ever done. Another emotion is I'm, I'm a little bit embarrassed I didn't think about some of the things you brought up regarding safety and regarding uh, autonomous flight and, and, and you can set up a flight line and you can simply let it go and walk away. You would never find the person who tried to the perpetrator. You'd never find him, ever. It, it, and so you, you, I almost there's a whole business in, 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 in drone deflection, <laughs> you know? I mean, because it can, it can happen. I mean, there's, a, there's just so much that, because I've been thinking at it from a, from a, a person that's thinking, I want to go solve a problem. I've not been thinking about it, putting on my dark, my dark glasses and go, hey, how can I actually do this, use this for, for, for evil? And, and, and it happens. And I, I just, that was, it was an epiphany I had a while ago that kind of scared me. Because you're right, over, flying over, over a, a prison or anything you want to. You, set, you can set up a flight line. It can fly whatever altitude you want. You can simply set up. It's a cheap drone. You, you walk away. How do you mitigate that? So to your point, there's a lot of thought that's got to go into this. This is not, it is, you know, it's a toy, but it's not a game. Yeah, yeah so I, I'm kind of freaked out right now. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was our first response. Yeah. Yeah. Our, 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 our security folks lost their minds. Like, yeah. Well, when you think of the cybersecurity, everything I would read on that, the one thing that they would do is hire hackers. The hackers would come in, and that's what they learned from. So, you know. Well, I had a, I had a student uh, recently, about four years ago. He was in the military, and he was one of my, one of my uh, students. And he, he, we do a senior assignment every year. And his senior assignment was, it was really nice. And it's, it's, it's a terrorist use, terrorists can use GIS too. And he had looked at the, at the electrical infrastructure of Illinois to try to find out uh, everything about the electric grid and where it was vulnerable. And all the way from, from uh, how many times, how far away the police were, to have video cameras, looking at everything and trying to, and he would locate things along that electric grid and say, if somebody wanted to actually do some, do some damage, what could they do to it? And nobody would ever know. So, not only can terrorists use GIS, they also can use drones, they can use, not just terrorists, just people in general. And, and how do you mitigate that? I don't know. It's a different, different a whole different uh, conversation, but it's certainly a conversation that has to be had. Of course, but in everything in life is a yin and yang. If you're waiting for it to become perfect, the bad guys will go ahead and they'll they'll set the stage. And I'm not saying we wait. I'm just no. saying it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a parallel but, path you've got to take. But we all have to come together to figure it out, and and that's getting everybody's opinions has been really interesting tonight. And like you said, from your point of view, what you guys are doing, what you're doing. You know, it's it's opening a dialogue. That I see what inspired. I think I, I'm impressed with the, with it. You guys, it's, it's, 
you a small city, but the way you're using it in the confines of your world is really impressive. Because you guys can send stuff out and let it go where it wants to go, and you're not worried about it actually flying you know, three cities away. And like I said, they, most of our flight paths yeah. have, we do a risk assessment yeah. Yeah. and have the legal counsel yeah. approved prior yeah. to actually deploying. Yeah. So yeah. I was flying, everyone, when I worked for NASA, we were flying uh, Exxon, Exxon uh, Refinery looking at the cracking units uh, with thermal imagery years ago because of the explosions they had trying to understand when the temperature was getting beyond. It. That was an aircraft, but I can't imagine what you can do with drones now. That's kind of cool. Well, 